Hello everyone, we'll get started here in just a moment. Happy Friday and happy Veterans Day. Okay. Then. Just getting everything set up for this evening, everybody. We'll start here in about one more minute. Happy, happy Friday. We're going to get started. Ooh. I have some fun things planned for this evening. Hi, Tracy. Hi, Linda. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Janelle. Hi, Mark. Hi, Vanessa. Hi, Karen. Hi, Mia. Welcome to Feature Friday. Happy Veterans Day, everybody. Hi, hi, Jacqueline. A little bit of coffee here. It is cold. It has turned cold, everybody. Oh my gosh. We had the cold. The front has moved through here in northern northern Illinois, and it's supposed to be down in the teens tonight. Furnace is running. <laughs> hi, Christina. Hi, Becky. Hi, Linda and Mike. Hi, Teresa. <clears throat> Hi, Luciano. Hi, Linda. <laughs> so, everybody, I have several things planned for this evening. And I hope everybody enjoys. Hold on just a second. Here we go. I think we're going to have a wonderful evening. Hello, Brenda. And hi, Belinda. Yes, Belinda, y'all have had two hurricanes in the last five or six weeks. Oh, my gosh. Hi, Christina. Hi, Denise. So, several things we're going to be doing tonight. We're going to first, I'm going to talk about about thread and how to match thread numbers and colors to your machine and all that fun stuff. Then <clears throat> I'm going to talk about the 7x14 magnetic hoop and how to do point to point positioning using that hoop. That is on our agenda for tonight. I'm actually going to do a little bit of embroidering and all that fun stuff. Hi Lisa. Hi Margaret. Yes, Jacqueline, it's really going to be cold in Kentucky as well. Hi, Marsha. Okay. <clears throat> and we'll get my other screen back up. There we go. So, <clears throat> yes. Oh, and the furnace just kicked off. That's a good sign. <laughs> I don't know what it's like in other parts of the country, but I know. Our electric rates doubled. And it went into effect in June, and boy, howdy, can you tell the difference on the utility bill? It's ridiculous. But anyway, enough of that. Hi, Janet. Hi, Ernestine. Janet, I'm I'm coming up to um, De Pere, Wisconsin. I will be there next Friday and Saturday at KK Sewing Bath. So, the first thing I want to talk about, everybody, hi, Linda, the first thing I'm going to talk about, <clears throat> so if you're just getting started with embroidery, or if you've been doing it a while, something old, there's a thing that happens, we all collect thread. We collect fabric, but we also collect thread. And if you're like me, I don't have... All my embroidery thread is not from the same manufacturer and it becomes it can become fun <laughs> fun 
<laughs> to try to match the color numbers on the screens to our computer, to our machine. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to move over the, cam the camera. Hi, Marion, hi, Dawn. Dawn, I just saw your pictures from, from there in Utah. Those are some beautiful photos where you're camping at. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna swap the camera and we're gonna look at the screen on this Solaris. This would apply to any, any embroidery machine, everybody. Okay, so let me move that camera over. And get this so I can see it. There we go. Okay, so for instance, let's say we are going to go and we're going to pull out a design. And let's, I'm going to use this beetle here that's built in. Now notice over here, I have Robinson Anton Pauli numbers up on my screen. The way you can change the thread charts is by going to your settings tab. And I'll answer all questions after I get through this little demo right here. But, <clears throat> excuse me, if we go into the embroidery area and we go one more screen right here, thread color, I've got it by numbers and thread brand. So if I click on this, I can have the have it either by the name of the color or the number of the color for that particular brand of thread. I want numbers. And our ape, look at the ones we have. We have where it says embroidery and country, those are brother color numbers. Remember that, that's important. And then here's Madeira, Polly, Madeira Rayon, Sulky, R.A. Robinson, Anton Polly, Robinson, Anton Rayon, Isocord, Guterman, Pace Sutter Pro, Polyfast, Iris, and Floriani. So if you have thread from, uh, say, five of these different companies, well, you can never get all five different companies to appear on your screen when you're going to match colors by a color number. However, that being said, I'm going to show you my workaround for that. Now, remember, in this one here, all, all embroidery machines, at least from Baby Lock, have these two in here, even going back several generations. Brother Embroidery Colors is what I use as a base. So I'm going to select that. It just says embroidery, but that is actually Brother Branded Embroidery Colors. Click on OK. Now, I'll have to back this out because it's, it loaded with the Art Roberts and Anton colors in there. So I'm just going to delete that and click on OK. I'm going to go pull it back up again. It's here, I think. Where was that? Where was that? Right there. It's under Animals, the Beetle set. And now notice... I'm going to move this closer so you can see these color numbers. There we go. But now notice, <clears throat> 001 looks like white. Red is 807. This color, 612. Now, I don't have any brother embroidery thread. However, however, I'm going to swap my camera. I want, which camera do I want? I want this one. There we go. <laughs> However, I don't own Brother branded thread, but what I did, and Mike actually purchased this for me, I got this, okay? This is a box of thread that he picked up off of Amazon. And I'm going to, I told him how I'd like to have something like this so that I could just match the colors of my different of my Madeira and my Sulky and my Superior 
and my isochord and my floriani match the color you could use a thread chart yes but it's easier to do this in the description of the video if you really like how I, how this looks there is a link where you can purchase this this box of thread but check it out it's in plastic storage containers and I'm going to move yet this different camera here so you can see this a little better. If we take this off, I haven't even opened it yet. But what's in here, everybody? Check this out. It comes with a storage case. Each level holds 20 cones of thread. There's 20 different colors of thread in here. Okay? And they lock together. So, you also get a color chart. And <clears throat> what this does, this has all these co color numbers listed. But on the back, it converts it from brother numbers to Madeira numbers. Comes with thread nets. It also comes with, check it out. There's a lot of stuff in this, right here. This is a water-soluble marker. It's a water, just dampen it and the line will disappear. And these are thread snips. Okay, that all came with it. And <clears throat> these are 500 meet 550 yard little mini cones of thread and the numbers that are on my screen these numbers are inside of this box so for instance let me find one of them those are really handy so right here this bottom one the first number the top of that list is zero zero one we'll check it out here it is zero zero one now I have this color I could go back through all of my other different brands of thread and visually color match it to this thread right here to use it and then I've only got one chart of numbers on my screen to ever look at and match it to these thread colors. I just think it's the coolest thing ever because it's really easy, easy to compare two cones of thread side by side to see how close the color match is. That is my cheater method for matching thread colors, everybody. I used to be, I used to use software and have several different thread color charts up to convert thread colors. But I can tell you not all thread colors are created equal in the embroidery world and they don't always match up perfectly. This, I feel this is a much better method is just to color match it <clears throat> with a visual side-by-side -side comparison number to number check that out there's what it is that is 60 colors and that's a really great way to match thread you have on hand to actual numbers that will match your screen and the color order number the thread with Ooh, that was a mouthful I hope that made sense super excited to be able to use that because it can be a daunting task when you are trying to match color numbers from different manufacturers for one stitch out. Okay, so I am going to answer any questions about that. Oh, let's see here. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Ronnie. Hi, Sheila. And Oh, thank you, Belinda. I tell you, it just takes it takes so much 
effort and time to match these color numbers otherwise. Let me move this over. There we go. Hello there. <laughs> but that's it. That's the easy peasy way of taking. <clears throat> I mean, if you have all thread from one manufacturer, this really doesn't totally apply to you as long as it's one of the manufacturers that are built into your computer and not your computer that are built into your your embroidery machine. <clears throat> Hi, Gail. Hi, Gia. Oh, and everybody, tomorrow at noon will be episode two of the blue and white quilt of our Quilts in Italy series starting at noon tomorrow. Just going to get that out there while I'm thinking about it. But yeah, it's an easy way to, and those 60, 60 cones of thread in that box with the storage containers is around 40 bucks. So it's not super expensive when it comes to a lot of thread. But it's a great way to, and it's actually stitch, we're gonna stitch with some of it tonight. I have this out right here. This is 007 from that box. And we're gonna use that in our demo tonight. So, woohoo. That's a wonderful uh, question, Luciano. Let me swap the camera. And you could hold it to your screen for that, but it's not going to be as easy to see. Because what it looks like right here, it'll look different than what it looks like on the screen quite honestly. For instance, let me pull that white one back, that 001 back out. For instance, here is the cone I was talking about, 001. Now I'm going to get really close here. And you can see it won't match it to the screen exactly. And, you know, the lights the lighting in your room can change the color of a thread as well. So that's not always the best way to do it. But if you hold it up cone to cone, you're going to be able to have a get a much closer match that way. For instance, right there. Oops, right there. Now I notice I'm looking at the screen. This looks more yellow here. This is actually pure white, just so everybody knows that. Okay, pretty cool. And let's go back over to here. There we go. Hello there. Now then, next on our agenda, there are no questions about that. That's a wonderful way to do it, Sarah. Absolutely. You, know, you just have to find out what works for you and go that way. I'm a very visual person. And I'm going to do it this way myself. <laughs> and that way, thread I already have, I can use without having to go and buy exact new thread for a new design that I want to stitch out. <clears throat> because chances are... I probably got something here that's extremely close and that's usually going to be good enough for me. So, all of that being said, I am going to move my machine a little bit closer. No, I'm not. So I'm going to clean off that. And next, what we're going to work on, this is the 7x14 magnetic baby lock hoop. This one only fits the Solaris, but what I'm going to show you tonight, you can use any hoop to do your point to point positioning in. And that's what we're going to be doing next. So I'm going to attach this to the machine. Let me move my camera. Hi, Pat. Hi, Sabrina. Hi, Cinda. Okay. So, here we are. I'm going to move this camera over so you can see what I'm doing here. 
And as long as you have stuff in this soup, these are super strong magnets, everybody. My gosh, you can pull them off. If it is just metal to metal, there is a tool that comes with this. This right here, and this is how you would have to get a magnet off if you're having trouble getting it off. I'll just show this right here. This will fit underneath the edge of the magnet. Let me move my, one of my screens. There we go. And then you just prize it up, and then you just lift it up like that. Love the magnetic hoops. And we're going to attach this to our machine. Oops. First, sorry about that, we're going to hit embroidery. And I am going to pick under category five, number three, and oops, category five, the diamond. And I'm going to do number three. Okay. And then I'm going to hit set. I've already got the hoop selected, so what I would also do, go up here to our settings page, touch the hoop, and then I already have the hoop size, seven by 14, whatever hoop you would use, you would use, set it up here and then set okay. Now, we're going to attach our hoop. And with these big magnetic hoops, you have to put the corner where there's no magnet up under the foot first. You'll just slide under there and attach it over here to the side. Okay. Now then, I'm going to move the machine a little bit closer to me. There we go. Okay. Now. Got all that, I'm gonna move my magnifying lens. I just swung it over here to this side. Love this thing, this is awesome. And check it out. What we're gonna do now, what's, some people call this hoop a border hoop, but it's a seven by 14 magnetic hoop. Yes, it's great for borders, but you can do any type of embroidery in it. Anything you do in the hoop, you could quilt in it. Whatever you wanted to do, you can do with that. But what I want to talk about tonight is how to actually do point-to-point -point placement. I'm going to take this design, and I am going to flip it. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees, because <clears throat> right now we're looking at our hoop. This is our hoop area right here. I may kill one of these lights. It's getting a little bit of a glare, I think. Let's see. Here. There we go. Is that better? Nope. Didn't make a difference. Okay, let's just single right here, perhaps. There we go. Been adjusting studio lighting. Okay, so what we're going to do, we are going to now touch. Okay, I rotated this so I have my diamond shape there. And now I'm going to use the, this is called the border function, but what it actually does, it will repeat patterns. So I'm going to add one to the top and one to the bottom. And I'm going to bring them together so the points are touching. And let's see here. Be right here. One more time. That looks pretty awesome right there. To get a bigger picture of this so we can see it easier. See this little hoop up here? I'm going to touch that and the plus sign on the magnifying lens. And now I can actually see that those points are actually touching. So that's what I'm after. 
Now all I have to do is thread the machine. Okay. There's that spool of thread from that box I just opened. Just going to thread our path. There's one, two, here's three, four, five, above the needle is six, through here is seven. And hit that threading button. And that is now threaded. Okay. I do have, check it out. Yes, this is the piece that we applicate on last week. Get that fabric out from underneath that hoop. There we go. I do have tearaway stabilizer under this tonight. Okay. And what we're going to do now, we are going to close this. Close. Hit OK going to go to embroidery and let me think here no we're going to return it we're going to group them now make sure they're grouped they are grouped that's one box I'm going to save that to memory right to the machine now I'll go to embroidery Notice they're all the same color, so they should just all stitch out automatically. This is only a two minute stitch out, 10 and 3 eighths by 2 and 7 eighths of an inch. And now we are going to rotate over here so you can see what's going on. There we go. And we're just going to hit the start button. Let me think. Yes. We're going to let that stitch out, <clears throat> and then we're going to add one, one diamond to one of the ends of this. We're going to move the fabric without removing the hoop, and that's what's great about this particular magnetic hoop, is the way it will do that. There's really a beautiful, that thread really looks nice. Pause that. I'm going to snip my thread tail because stuff like that just bothers the heck out of me. So snip that. There we go. Now we'll start it back up. And we're just going to let it stitch out now. Yes, you can do the same with the Altair. Everything I've done up to this point can actually be done on any of the baby lock embroidery machines with IQ. That border function, the repeat, that is in the Altair Meridian as well. Can this be done on a large quilt? Absolutely it can. Now check out what happened, everybody. It stopped right there. What I did not do was make it monotone, even though it's a different number. So it's just stopping because this was actu is actually the type of stitch you would use for applique. So I'm just going to press my start button so it does the next one. It's all good. But Lucy, yes, that can be done on a large quilt as well. Absolutely, it could. Hi, Sylvia. Oh, I remember. I remember when I lived in Denver. Yeah, if it got 36 degrees, you still wore your, your t shirts and flip flops. Thank you, Cinda. <laughs> I saw that. Hi, Sabrina. Okay. 
And then it's got one more to do after this one. And then we're going to start it. And then what I'm going to do when it finishes this, I'm going to slide the fabric up so I can get one more on the end of this fabric without removing everything from the hoop. It's pretty cool. It is totally cool. <clears throat> but you could actually use any hoop to do this with. It'd just be a little... Whereas with the Solaris, I can actually use the projector to position the next one. But with the Altair Meridian, you would actually have to use a snowman sticker and do an advanced positioning with the camera app or just take the background image in and position off of the image. Okay, so there it is. Check it out. Let's get a look at this. Hold on. There they are. Perfectly match points. Now, <coughs> What if, if I wanted to add more down this way, and I don't have a big piece of fabric on it, so I'm going to move this all the way up, and I'm just going to position one without stitching it out. Hold on. So here's, since I'm going to move the fabric this way, hold on here, there we go. I'm going to move the fabric this way, so I'm going to take off the bottom magnet, I'm going to take this magnet off. I'm going to take the one off at the very top. And since I'm going to scoot it that way, I'm going to remove this one and this one. And this one, these other two, I'm going to leave these two small ones. I'm going to leave this one and this one on. And then I'm just going to slide it. These are still attached, but this will keep it nice and straight as I slide it up. I can slide it back. We're going to try it right there. The magnets on this hoop are very, very strong, everybody. And Luciano, you can use a magnetic hoop with a quilt. I do it all the time. The thing is, <clears throat> the trick to it is, you can, whatever your you're doing in the hoop it cannot be hanging over the edge of a table the weight has to be supported otherwise it'll create drag and then it will not stitch out prop it'll it can make itself come unhooped and that's never a fun thing to happen so if i had a big quilt in <clears throat> i might have to have a supporting table to the side or to the back of my work area to support the weight of the quilt Okay, there we go. We're all rehooped now. I'm going to add another one right here. So let's go back over here. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So now I'm still on this screen. Now I could, if I had more fabric coming this way, think if I were doing the border along a tablecloth. I could totally do another one of these in the hoop, but I don't have that much room here. So I'm going to add one more. Mia, this magnetic hoop does not fit the Altair. There is a five by seven made by Baby Lock that will fit the Altair. So you could do it in that one for sure. Or you could use a nine and a half by 14 hoop that came with your machine. Okay, so now then, I'm going to 
kind of focus on what I'm doing right here. So everybody, what we're going to do, I'm going to go back to embroidery edit, embroidery edit. Okay. I'm going to ungroup those. And now <clears throat> I'm going to get rid of one, two, and I'm just going to keep one of them. Okay. And what I want to do now, I am going to going to go to embroidery, layout. We're going to do a snowman st sticker. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to match it to the center top. And then I'm going to scan it. And this machine will tell me what to do since this does have a built-in camera and all that stuff. I will have to add a snowman sticker when it asks for it. <clears throat> but notice I have not had to remove my hoop to rehoop the fabric or anything else. So it's wanting Check it out. It is wanting that sticker first. And I knew that's what it would do, but I just wanted to show you. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to align the dot in the in the the very center dot in the center of the sticker, okay, with where I want that point to line up to. I selected the top point of this next shape. So what I'm going to do is this right here. Let me get this over here so you can see. There we go. We're going to line that little dot right there. And then once it gets positioned there, I can fine tune it however I need to. Okay. That'll get it extremely close. And now we'll click on OK. There we go. Just trying to get rid of some glare there, everybody. OK. Now we're going to rescan it. Now it will scan. And there it is. See, it's looking for that sticker. And there it is. You can see it there. It's, it's got it found the sticker. Now it's asking me to remove it. Here we go. We'll remove that sticker. Now I'm going to save that sticker because I'll be able to use it again. When I save them, I just put them right back on the sheet where I peeled them off. Now remove the uh, embroidery positioning mark. So I'm going to click on OK. And now it is lined up <clears throat> to that point. But let's just see how close it is. Next, I'm going to see this camera icon right here. I'm in, I am in the embroidery stitch out mode. <clears throat> let's do this. We're going to scan it. Click on OK. And now we'll see, be able to see that mark from the previous stitching and line it, fine tune it so that we can get it to be lined up perfectly. <clears throat> okay. Check it out on the screen here, everybody. <clears throat> so this, <clears throat> these marks up through here, that's where it's already been stitched. And look at that. That is how perfectly close, that is how perfectly it actually did that. But to make sure, 
we are going to touch this hoop, this hoop icon and the plus sign. And now here I can see, check it out. I can see that needs to be moved, <clears throat> excuse me, to the right just a little bit and up just a hair. So I'm going to close this preview. And I'm going to close this. I'm going to select move. And then just by touching this little button right here. Another thing I can do, I'm going to touch the, turn the, the projector on. And this is really the easier way to do what I'm trying to do here. We're going to use the projector to position. go to let me go back to edit oh, that was correct and that's that is actually all you do using the, the snowman method to get that positioned up right there pretty cool let's see if there's any questions about that. Okay. Hi Peggy. Welcome. Hi Trudy. Oh, wonderful Trudy. I'm that's really nice you were able to do that with your mom. Wonderful. Okay. So that is that is how that is why a lot of people love this what they call the border hoop. I don't really like to call it that because you can actually use it for just regular embroidery if you want to. You saw how strong the magnets were on this. And I can tell you, with fabric under there, I can pull these off with my hand. But check this out. I just said that. And this is pretty strong. It is not wanting to come up. But it did. And that is what, and don't get your fingers caught underneath that magnet between that and the frame. It will pinch. <laughs> but that is what this tool is for. This makes it super easy. You can just pry up the end of it, and then they come off super easy. Okay. So, let's see here. Da, 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 da. Right there. And one more screen. So what's really great about that, as you just seen that, that's how easy that is to use that feature. I love totally totally love the feature on this machine and this is also on the Altair Meridian Destiny machines and that is once we go back to embroidery edit right here and we go into that border feature there's where you can add multiple multiple pull in one design and then you can mirror them, add them, stack them. It's a great way to, if you're into making patches or multiple appliques because with these buttons you can actually push the designs apart right there where my mouse sit, my cursor is or that will scrunch them all together which is what I did right here. Lots of fun. Okay.
Any questions, anybody? Yeah, well, Trudy, the grid you see on this screen, that's not projected. That is actually just the hash marks for um, the grid mark in the settings menu. That's not actually a projected grid, just so you know. See here? That's one, actually one inch marks. If I go here and just pick a blank screen and then we go back, check it out. Now there's no grid marks whatsoever on that. That was not a projected image. That was just a placement grid built into the screen itself. God, I hope that made sense. <laughs> okay. Let's see here. Luciano, I've used those on different brands of machines and those are great hoops. However, <clears throat> as you saw when I just was able to slide this up, that helps with the positioning as far as that goes. So just something to think about. I personally like the magnetic hoop better than the spring loaded one myself. Oh, you're welcome, gal. Oh, thank you, thank you. Hi, Linda. I know, Linda, you're, you probably got the same cold weather we've got over here. We're practically neighbors, aren't we? <laughs> I think we're about 70 miles from the Missouri state line, something like that, it's not far. Okay, so let's get back over to here. There we go. Hello there. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Tomorrow at noon, um, episode two of the Blue and White Quilt Talk. We'll start sewing it together tomorrow. Episode two, noon, Central Standard Time. Episode two, Quilts in Italy. That happens tomorrow. Next Friday night, I will not be here. I will be up in the Green Bay, Wisconsin area uh, at KK Sewing Back. If you're in that area, stop in and say hello. It's, I'll be there on Friday and Saturday. And oh my goodness, we're going to have a lot of fun. When I get back from that, I will not be traveling away from the house again until until January. So we're going to have a lot of fun things to do together between now and then. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. As always, it's been fun. It always is fun. I love doing this. And I will see you all next. Hmm. It'll probably be... I'll have to keep you posted on that one. <laughs> It won't be next weekend. It'll be the weekend after next or a day through the week. But everyone take care. Happy Veterans Day. Stay warm. Stay safe. And have a wonderful weekend. Bye, everybody.